I feel very fortunate to be in this position to be able to play uh, in the on the biggest final table in history. I try to go in like every day, just put your name on a bag, first day, second day, now final day. There's a lot of frustrations, there's a lot of victories, there's a lot, of th lot going on during a poker tournament. Bowling. For the past 15 years, I put in more time to poker than anybody else. So now just to be able to take like last two, three years maybe where I just like take a breather, play the biggest games when I feel more like playing, and it's just, yeah, gone very well. Some bad beats, some losses, some frustrations, some angry at the world, why me moments. Yeah. Then you have some elation and victory and like, wow, look at me. Yeah, there's definitely some expectations coming in since I have a, a, thir a third of the chips in play. Good fold. Just go in, hopefully play my A game, hopefully things go well, one or two things go well. Could easily happen and just do my thing and yeah, hope for the best. It would be very awesome to be the number one all-time winner. Like, by definition, there's literally only one. And when you consider the whole scope of poker and everything, that's pretty special. But again, it is poker. There is luck. You know, I have some pretty strong opponents, so I'm just going to just play it hand by hand. It certainly feels like a bit bigger of a stage than some of the others I've, I've been on. The final table in Jeju was like all really tough pros. This is a mix between some recreationals and some unknown pros and some top pros. So it'll just be a different mix, different feel. At the same time, it's a pretty tough final table. You know, everybody has pretty big like poker accolades. It'll be a long day of battling. I want to enjoy every moment. I'm just really looking forward to it. Winning is not a sometimes thing. Winning is an all-time thing. The players that are preparing for this Triton Million final table don't do things right every once in a while. They do things right most of the time. Winning is a habit. In business, in poker, in life. Poker's greatest moments come from great opportunity. And shortly, eight people who love the game of poker will have the opportunity to create one of the greatest moments in their lives. It's time to leave doubt at the door. It's time to win 19 million. And after several days of play, here we are at long last. The final table of the Triton Million. Ali Najad alongside Daniel Negreanu as you get a look at the payouts. And Daniel, you know perhaps better than anyone what it's like to play at the richest final tables of all time. Walk us through it. Well, I'm so pumped just watching this. And I got to say, the night before, that sleep is difficult, knowing that the next morning you're going to wake up and you're going to be playing for 19 million pounds. The jitters are there, but once you sit down and the cards are dealt, you're just playing poker, especially if you're one of the pros that's well-seasoned. There's a lot on the line here in this event. You know, the top spot on the all-time money list, which obviously someone like Bryn Kenny covets. No doubt about it. And he's starting off this final table with an open raise to 250,000. Sensei Kenny, as I like to refer to him, given his affinity for Japanese fashion. Yeah, he made a trip over to Japan, and I think he fell in love. And all of a sudden, he came back in kimonos and slippers. <laughs> A three bet here from Stephen Chidwick out of the big blind with the King Four off suit. So perhaps Stephen not feeling much pressure and looking to apply some to Bryn Kenny. Well, early on, Chidwick setting the tone, saying, This is my table. You want to win a pot, it's going to come through me. Applying the pressure and gets Kenny to fold ace 10 suited. Wow. Boss stack here belongs to Vivek Rajkumar. You'd think if anyone was going to wield the sheriff badge, it would be him, but Chidwick. Setting the tone, as you mentioned early in the background. You see Igor Kurganov, who busted on the bubble, along with his girlfriend Liv Barry and Bill Perkins' girlfriend, Lara. In the early going, you know, when you look at the pay jumps, you know, the first couple are not all that significant. You know, the players are really going to be eyeing the big jumps from third, second, and all the way to first. But still, you know, this is the opportunity right now to sort of get your bearings, figure out, well, who's coming with what today in terms of strategy? Who's feeling frisky? Who's locking it down? Uh, 1.7 to start. Some of these pay jumps represent larger than first place prizes for main events on certain tours and circuits. So not insignificant by any stretch as we see Big Al on the button attacking, and he's got not one but two pocket pairs behind him in the blinds. 
Rajkumar first. He's going to make the call and go hunting for a four on the flop. And with two nines, how will Perkins react? This is a spot where he could just jam it. He's got 1.5 million, represents less than 15 big blinds. You've got a raise and a call from the button of small blind. It's the perfect situation to get it in. You know what that means. Uh, he's throwing it in his head. <laughs> <laughs> I think that means all in. But you got to put some chips in the middle, Perky. I want him to put the chips in the hat. <laughs> yeah. well, well, he's done. doing it. Uh, you got to like to play to Carlo. Imagine's going to fold 9-5 suited. <laughs> but that'll be a tough decision for Vivek. He's got the two fours. And he's got enough chips to make a call like this. Sure. And he could. he's often going to be up against ace-queen, ace-king, ace-jack. Not going to like seeing two nines as he's a four to one underdog to eliminate Bill Perkins. Looking rather dapper. Indeed. Went out to a tailor here in London and got those spiffy threads sorted out in short order. Queen eight seven, advantage nines. He just can't stand the back door, so. That gets then. Yeah, you know, if Rajkumar loses this pod, not a big hit to his stack, but obviously crucial for Perkins. Puts him back in the game. Well, only two outs once for Vivek. And he does not connect on the river. Phew, the sigh of relief is real. A little up there. He's emotionally what invested. I love watching players who wear their emotions on their sleeves. Suit feels a little less tight right now. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> so a little hit to the chip leaders stack in the early going as Perky grabs a double up. Sensei Kenny with a couple of nickels under the gun. So hand certainly good enough to open. And Bryn has the reputation of being among the most active players at any table he is seated at and with a wide range. The thing about Kenny is I would describe him as like a chameleon in that he changes his approach, not only from tournament to tournament, from hour to hour, from minute to minute. Sometimes he's playing super tight, other times he opens it up, and that's what makes him one of the most difficult players on the tour to play against today. Well, Chidwick has pushed back on Kenny once already with a king four offsuit from the big blind. On this occasion, from the cutoff, he is three betting him with queen nine suited. And if you're Bryn Kenny, at some point you begin to wonder, is this guy targeting me? You, you start to, absolutely. And Chidwick is early on sort of setting the tone, saying like, I'm going to put pressure on you guys. So if you're gonna open, you know, you better open a little tighter because I'm gonna smash you. Well, Kenny's gonna take a flop, try to hit that five. Did lay down ace 10 suited to Chidwick earlier, but here with the pair, oh, he's going baby. to flop himself a set. The only bad news, perhaps, Chidwick doesn't have a whole lot cooking, but will try to rep the ace, I imagine. No question about it. You know, in position, Chidwick's gonna represent this ace. The question is, will he fire a second and third billet? For Kenny, no reason to bet. You just let your opponent hang themselves. Checks over to Chidwick. First bullet. 400K. So now you're hoping, if you're Kenny, that you're up against Ace King. That would be the dream scenario. And he makes the call. Four cards to a wheel out there, but we don't expect to have a three in Chidwick's holding. Yeah, neither player should really have a three. I mean, it is possible, but it is not a significant worry with the raises coming from under the gun. And of course, a three bet is unlikely to have a three in it. So neither player, I think, is worried about a straight, but it goes check, check. Now the question for Kenny is, does he try to get some value with a bet, or is he better off checking and hoping Chidwick bombs to try to get him off a hand like ace-jack or ace-queen? 465. All right, a small bet from Kenny. He's looking to get raised here. This is what the design of this bet was. Get a loose call maybe, or maybe Chidwick thinks, well, listen, if he had a good hand, he'd bet a lot more than that. But Chidwick smartly lets it go. Doesn't fall for the trap that Kenny was setting with that small little blocker bet. Like, oh, you know, I just want to bet small. Don't, don't raise me, please don't raise me. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Back in London, where the Triton Million final table marches forward. Big Al, ace three suited, limping in under the gun. Dan Smith doing the same behind him in the cutoff. And now from the small blind with two nines, Canadian Timothy Adams. Makes it 760 to go. 
healthy raise up to 760. But Big Al didn't limp to fold. He wants to see a flop with that ace three of diamonds. Now the question is, does it make sense for Dan Smith to try to flop a set three ways? Cost him 600,000 more roughly? He says no, doesn't want to play it three way. And he would not have flopped the set, but Big Al has flopped the nut flush draw here against second pair. A lot of ways for Big Al to win this pot. You know, he could make his flush, but he could also play this aggressively and get Adams to fold the nines. If Adams leads out and, and Big Al says, I'm all in, as we've seen him do before with draws, it's gonna be a tough call for Timothy Adams. The trouble perhaps could be that Big Al has done exactly that with the draw in the past, and Adams may sniff it out and decide to make a call. Such a tough decision, because when you've got two nines and someone moves in on you here, you think, okay, my best case scenario is they've got some sort of big draw. My worst case, I'm dead. Well, Al decides to call. Now the board pairs. As played, Adams has to really be worried about Big Al having something like Jack-10 suited or Queen-Jack suited. Possibly an overpair being tricky? Slim, I think he probably would have, if you know the trap was set pre-flop, re-raised, but I mean, it's always possible. Big Al's a tricky player. 575 now from Adams. And this is sort of the moment of truth for Timothy Adams' two nines, where he'll find out whether or not he thinks they're good, but Big Al coming with the call. The board double pairing. So the texture favorable to the two nines on this run out. Certainly true. You know, this could be trouble for Big Al as well. If he put his opponent on something like Ace King firing a couple bullets, now he's got sixes and fours with an ace, Come which on. would tie that hand. Adams checked and Big Al is ripping it all in there. Wow. What a brutally tough call for Adams as played. Question is, what would Big Al do this with? Does he have six, seven suited? Does he somehow have a four? Would he do this with just the jack? Unlikely. So for Adams, he's figuring, well, listen, this is either a complete bluff or, you know, obviously I'm, he's, I'm up against the full house. And Adams folds. I don't even know if it was and gets shown the bluff. Oh, oh my Al goodness. Wow, oh, Big oh, Al, the wild card at this final shows table. The bluff. They don't call him Big Al for nothing. <laughs> Unconventional to say the least. Adams couldn't sniff out the bluff there. He's a, he's a pretty big gangster. I don't know, he's gangster. gonna want that hand back. That's gangster. gotta sting. Call, call. Gangster. Call, call, show. Actually, I think he almost shoved out a turn. We might have to play the videotape. I say, what would Rick do in this spot? Okay. Shove. No, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Rick Solomon, the first like, casualty in the Triton Million with a front row seat so to funny. the Big Al show. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the only way I can win the pot. Chip leader Vivek Rajkumar with two red tens makes it 350. Blinds are up to 80 and 160. The price of poker has gone up. Did I just see Rajkumar stick his tongue out at the field behind him? I do believe you did. That was funny. Right out of the blue, he's getting stared down from Perky and is like, what? I'm going to go out on a limb and say Vivek's not feeling so tense here with this 16.4 million behind. 2-2. A little bit of a loose call from Dan Smith from the big blind with queen three offsuit. King Jack six, total swing and miss for Smith. But for Raj Kumar, two overs to the tens out there. Yeah, not a flop Vivek's gonna like. He decides to check it back and there's the queen. Ugly stuff as the two tens are now behind but have turned into an open ender. Can catch an ace 10 or a nine. Dan Smith gives him the chance to have that free card. I imagine Vivek would take it here. And he does. Cannot improve on the end. Hearts come home. If I'm Dan Smith, I feel pretty good about my queen right now. Looks like 400. make a little stab at it. 400K. Targeting some ace high? Some ace high, some pocket nines, some ace jack, some jack 10. He certainly isn't too worried about any flushes or a king. He probably would have heard from Vivek on the flop or the turn had he had one of those holdings. So pretty confident with the queen and a laydown from Vivek there. That wasn't that easy of a laydown because Dan Smith, he's crafty. He could add, you know, four or five offsuit there. 
Well, making good decisions is certainly in large part how Vivek landed on the chip lead and how Dan Smith joins him here at the final table. Very emotional non chip. That was a very emotional non chip. Kenny from the hijack opens to 325 with ace four suited. Big Al with an eight nine suited flats from the cutoff. And another eight nine suited for Chidwick in the big. Well, we've seen Chidwick be very frisky so far. Three betting Bryn twice. Will he go for a third with Big Al in the middle with a hand like eight nine suited? Not this time. This time he feels like I've got a hand I want to see the flop with. So he just calls. And the flop providing gut shot straight draws to both Chidwick and Big Al. Not a good flop texture for Bryn Kenny. He decides not to continuation bet. It's just too coordinated and likely that either Big Al or Chidwick had a piece of that. Checked all the way around and now spades show up on the turn. So both Big Al and Bryn Kenny with flush draws. Bryn, of course, the nut flush draw. This might be a card he's willing to stab at. Bet on the come, as they used to say back in the day. Kenny's flush draw includes a gutter. It's also the best hand right now, little does he know. I'd expect Big Al to call and try to catch that flush. He plays unconventionally. You're never sure what Big Al is going to do. He might just say all in. Who knows? He likes to call. Nothing there for Chidwick to continue with. And a straight on the river for both. Unfortunately for Big Al, Kenny's is bigger. So all Kenny's thinking about right now is what is the best way to maximize value? If I check, will he bet? If I bet a lot, would he call with a nine? Oh. Instantly calls the 685. Bryn Kenny picks up a nice pot here. Big Al snap called him. He can't blame him. 685. And a 3.7 million chip pot heading to Sensei Kenny. I would imagine the rest of the pros at this table are not pleased with that development. <laughs> that was exactly my thought. You know, seeing Bryn Kenny chip up uh, to around 10 million in chips is not a welcome sight for the other players. And here's the chip counts. Big Al slipping below 6 million. Kenny up around 8.5. Right. Two tens here for Big Al. Perhaps he will cauterize the wound. Opens to 425,000. Now we've seen Bill Perkins play very snug throughout this tournament. Hand like A7 suited, you can, you can go three ways with this. The race size is rather large to 425. So sitting on 2.3 million, you'd think flat is probably not ideal. It's a question of, do I jam with this hand or move on to the next? Bill in character, opting for the latter. And perhaps well-timed, given Dan Smith is in there with ace-jack off-suit. He flats from the button. In position if you're a pro against a player who isn't, you want to see more flops. You don't necessarily want to three-bet all the time and get it in pre. So Dan electing to just call. Does not hit the 8-5-4 flop, which is a good one for Big Al. And his C-bet, 550K. So Dan does have the ace of spades. Three flush. He's also got a hand that could be the best hand some of the time. You know, Big Al could have king queen, king jack. So he's not going to let him just win it on the flop. He's going to peel at least once. And a queen of clubs hits the turn. It's a card that would worry Big Al, I would imagine. But he's grabbing for chips. Well, he likes to check it. Worried enough. And that does appear to open the door potentially for Dan Smith to lay claim to this 2.3 plus. Does he want the free card or does he want to push Big Al off a middle pair? That's the Check. dilemma. He likes to take the free one and hits the jack on the river. Horrible river and Big Al with an emphatic check. 
well, Big Al's not going to like this. You, you would expect Dan now to throw out some kind of a bet in the neighborhood of six to 700K. And I would imagine Big Al. A million fifty thousand. Well, he's going a little heftier. A little over a million. Got to throw that 50,000 in extra call. for the charity, you know. Hit the jack. <laughs> and you hear Big Al say call, and he will be disgusted. How much is that? To hear Dan 50. Smith say, I hit the jack. Smith sizing perhaps north of what he would have targeted a pro with, given Big Al is a little stickier and more stubborn, and he is rewarded. Now, one of my favorite moments at the final table was the Big Al bluff. Come on. The fact that he calls the preflop, calls twice in position, instantly goes all in, just really shows what an amateur, a businessman, a recreational, whatever you want to say, can do. And Big Al has tons of experience playing cash games, but you know, he doesn't study, he doesn't go into the lab to think about his strategies and stuff. He just looks at it and he, sa and he, and he said, what would Rick Solomon do? He would go all in, and that's the only way I can win a pot, and that's what I'll do. And he made Timothy Adams fold, and the fact that he shows it, I think, is really cool because then the pros think, wow, okay, so this can happen too. Because in this whole field, they've been looking out for each other, and time after time again, you know, the, the, the businessmen have come out and really surprised them that way. Good realization there. You know, typically when you're dealing with a non pro, they're in one camp or the other where they just bluff way too much or they'll never bluff. Well, Big Al has shown on a couple occasions that he's more than willing to fire it in there with absolutely nothing. And obviously that makes him dangerous, as does Vivek Rajkumar, the chip leader, holding ace king. And Perkins finally finds a hand he's willing to go with, with the two sevens, jamming for a little over 2.3 million. He's gonna get called this time by Vivek with the ace king. No doubt about it. Will there be anybody in between? The answer is no. And Perky's gonna try to double through Vivek a second time. Fair fight versus Vivek. Fair fight, as Bill Perkins says, a classic confrontation, coin flip situation. Door cards clean, and so are the two cards behind it. Three to one favorite from here on out for the sevens. Condolences, Bill. Apologies. I really appreciate that. <laughs> He's apologizing for the, for the ace or king that he knows is coming. Well. More outs. Maybe me? a five as oh. Vivek picks up a wheel draw. How Bill's walking this? away like he lost. He roots for a deuce. How does he? What is it? Here comes the river. Moment of truth. Whew. Another <laughs> sweep of the brow from Bill Perkins. <sighs> All the way up over five million in chips now. And Vivek right sliding a little bit you, at the hands of Bill Perkins. I'm just going to fold every single time. Doesn't you appear phased <laughs> as Perky. It's a nice cash infusion. Going into our first break, Vivek Rajkumar is still the man to beat, even though he's lost three million in chips, and the majority of those chips going to Bill Perkins, who's doubled through Rajkumar, nines versus fours, and sevens versus ace king. Well, thankfully for Vivek, he has enough to absorb these sorts of blows, but this isn't the way he scripted his final table, Daniel. <laughs> no, he's been the bank for Bill Perkins so far, <laughs> doubling him up twice. Making Perky a contender. <coughs> Timothy Adams in the hijack with King three suited. Lays it down. Now King seven suited for Kenny in the cutoff. A little better position, a little better hand. A few more chips for Bryn Kenny. Means he's gonna open with this one. Up to four and a quarter. Big Al wasting no time and making the call from the button. He's got a queen jack off suit here, and his flat allows Perky to come in for a discount from the big blind with ace four suited, which turns into middle pair on a nine high rainbow board. Best hand for now. Well, that's a good flop for Perky. He only really has to worry about a nine or obviously an over pair. But now that he's checked, if it goes checked around, very few great cards for him, unless he improves. Same story for Kenny, but with control of the betting, he barrels again. Four and a quarter once more. Big Al releases, and now we're down to heads up. Board pairs and brings the diamond draw on the turn. Well, that's a card that could convince Bryn Kenny to barrel, or of course he could check and try to take the free card. 
If he does barrel, that might work. But look, wait, never mind. Bill Perkins leading out. And might this look weak to Bryn Kenny? You know, it's still a tough spot to do anything about it. You know, you'd have to rep a three yourself. You've got the flush draw. Bryn Kenny will figure this out. He reads his customers incredibly well. Unorthodox play from Bill Perkins, but I like it. Kind of the thing that Bryn Kenny stakes his reputation wow. on. And Exhibit A rips it in for the full 7.2, and the Ace-4 instantly mucked. Incredible play there. The semi-bluff from Bryn Kenny reading mm. into Perky maybe having just a 4 or a 9 mm -hmm. and figuring he's going to blow him right off. And if not, that's no, okay. Hit. I'll catch a king or a diamond. A lot of heat. I don't really want to know that hand. You don't, Bill. No, if you step into the kitchen, got to be ready to take the heat. I took some heat. I, I was... Kenny the philosopher. Battling with the heat. Should have stayed in the lounge. Yeah, I should have stayed in the lounge. Stephen Chidwick here with an 8-6 off suit, limping from the small blind. Saw Bill Perkins pretty snug, folding a six on the button. Dan Smith checking back and flopping wonderfully. Hitting his queen with a couple of fives out there. A lot of ways to approach this. Small blind versus big blind limb pots. A lot of creativity available to you. A lot of different ways in which you can play hands. Lots to think about. Ranges are wide. And Smith is going to check back. Hope he can get Steven to put some more chips in the pot, which he certainly might now that he's paired a six. Absolutely. I like the way Dan played this to check it back. Allow his opponent to catch up a little bit. If you're sitting there and you're Chidwick, your opponent check back the flop. Sure, he could still have a queen or a five, but your six is golden a lot of the time. And Chidwick's going to bet the 200K. And for Dan, really, Nothing but a call. I mean, I can't rationalize a raise or a fold, so it seems like the standard play is just to call and see the river. And now that Dan has made the call, what might Chidwick be thinking as we see Smith improve to queens and nines? Well, I think Chidwick is thinking, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Because now that the nine hit, you're also losing to seven, eight, seven, nine, eight, nine. You're losing to a queen, a slow played five. You may think that, you know, Dan might have a six as well, so this could be a chop pot. But nevertheless, very small bet from Chidwick. And yeah, Chidwick firing. He does block the eight. It's a little bit value, a little bit blocker bet. Thinking maybe that Dan Smith is calling him on the turn with something like ace or king high. 1.3 million. May call the river. A raise here from Dan with the queens and nines as he improved. Tanking his chances that Chidwick didn't flop a five. When you have this hand, you wonder, what are you going to get called by? And you do get called there. I'm a little surprised that Chidwick called the extra million on the end. Well, these guys play in the streets, man. They play in the streets. These small blind, big blind confrontations, you see a totally different dynamic. And uh, there you saw well-played hand from Dan Smith trapping Chidwick, who flopped nothing. I think anyone who's played poker at any point in their life will tune into a big event like this. There's something different about knowing everyone is watching where any of your moves will be seen by the entire world. Every poker player is going to watch the final table of this event, so it's maximum pressure, it's a huge audience, and you're going to be playing against the absolute best. Playing well or running well or making a bad decision will change your legacy. If you make a really big mistake in the biggest tournament ever, it's not something that people are going to forget. But it would behoove all of these players to just focus on the task at hand and not be overly concerned with people out there watching. You know, it's tough. You're out there. You're under the lights, the camera. You got millions of people watching, and then they're all going to, you know, come on social media and tell you how stupid you are if you make <laughs> a mistake. Added pressure. Some people crack under that pressure. Others thrive. Well, thriving is not what chip leader coming into this final table, Vivek Rajkumar, has been doing, having lost three million since he took his seat here with an ace jack. He opens to 450,000, and Aaron Zhang finally with a hand he can play. Yeah, we have not seen Aaron Zhang in action. We know that he's an aggressive player. You saw some of the earlier action, really getting involved, three betting, jamming, and here he is jamming from the small blind. Yeah, his stack just 12 bigs, and. Okay, He's going to go with no it. Problem. I thought you shoved 20 big blinds, not 10. 
does have Vivix Diamonds covered, and he will have the lone opportunity to scoop this with two no. hearts on the flop. No, 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 no. Nobody likes to go out oh. in these situations. It's just not fair. Oh, oh. the pain <laughs> of the sweat. Oh, like the 10 percent Aya. Aya is right. Oh. And the oh river of fourth heart, Aaron Singh, with wow. the backdoor flush. And Rajkumar continues to <laughs> distribute like gaming tokens. How does this happen? It's incredible. What an unbelievable turn of events now for Aaron Zhang. Looked like he was going to chop instead. Suck it, Aaron. He's doubled up. <laughs> <laughs> Raj Kumar now down to 12 and a half million as the gap narrows between he and Bryn Kenny, who is up over 10 million and running in second. And the rest of the players jockeying for position. Considering the pay jumps, as I mentioned earlier, you know, early on at a final table, they're not too significant. Still a lot of money, but percentage-wise, not so much. The real jumps happen when you're five, four, three handed. Chidwick with two red fives with a mini raise, as Aaron Zhang likes to call it. And Adams has him pipped with two sixes on the button here, sitting on just about 13 bigs. Well, against a player like Chidwick, who's very active, opens a lot. You gotta think two sixes is way ahead of that opening range. And it's time to gamble. All in its sales. Chidwick asking for a count. He's committed here. I think he's gonna have to make this call with the fives and see the bad news and that he's pipped. He'd much rather be against two over cards. But instead, dominance pre for Adams. His six is holding on on the King-8 deuce board. And now is when we close our eyes and repeat the following phrase. No five, no five, no five. And then it just happens. There you go, no five. <laughs> it's as easy as that. A double for Timothy Adams. A little hit to Chidwick stack there. Sliding to 5.2 million. As Dan Smith will take a peek at ace queen off. Well, that's something I'd call a real hand in this situation. 400. Legitimate. It qualifies, as Tony G might say. Min raise from Dan Smith. Most of the players at the table electing to min raise or maybe min raise with some gravy, make it 425 for fun. Doesn't have a huge impact on strategy. It's mostly a personal preference thing. And we know what Bryn Kenny's preferences are. Ratchet up the pressure on all comers. 1.425. Yeah, and here it comes. He's just zoned in right now. He's trying to pick up weakness. Unfortunately for him, you know, dominated against Dan Smith's hand. And I think Ace Queen's a hand that uh, Dan's going to at least call with. And what is Big Al thinking about against the three bet? He likes them suited cards. He likes playing in position, but uh, he can't call here. Well, I'd sooner take five or 10 seconds than you have like 10? make a bad decision, so yeah. credit to Al. Both players deep stacked. Difficult decision for Dan Smith. Ace queen is a danger hand. That's one point. If you're up against a real hand, you're in big trouble. Ace king, aces, kings, queens. If Bryn is legit here and has a hand, ace queen is just dominated. All in. Wow! What a read from Dan Smith. He says, I know Bryn Kenny, and Bryn Kenny is messing around trying to pick on me. Well, eat some of that. Dan Smith he had two good cards. won't be pushed around. Once he turned age and he started to play professionally, yeah. friends and family were like, oh my God, that's an addiction. Why isn't he right. going to college? So they got into my head a little bit, and I went to one Gamblers Anonymous meeting. I didn't bring Bryn, I went by myself. And then maybe like a week or two after we went to his, my husband and I went to one of his tournaments in Barcelona and I was like, there's nothing wrong with poker. <laughs> so I never like, stepped. This is great, I never guys. Stepped for the, I did not yeah. need uh, Gamblers Anonymous. Is that, is it and your mom, Daniel, felt the same way? My mom said, Daniel, forget about the poker, you go to school. <laughs> then I bought her a house so and a car and she said, poker is okay, I like poker. <laughs> 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 Funny how that switched once I had some success. But, I, you know, hey, every mother's going to be concerned about 
their child taking on a profession that's uh, out there and different. But good for Bryn's mom, not only for hopping on the plane, but Bryn for, in all likelihood, having reached out and said, Mom, come sweat me. I might be the winningest poker player of all time when this is all said and done. And here he is, flopping top pair against Big Al, who's got a spade draw. Can he checks it to him. Big Al firing one million. Yeah, you got top pair here. You're facing Big Al, who's already bet one million. That's about a quarter of his stack. I wouldn't fault Bryn for just all saying, in. let's go for it. And he does, all in, putting the pressure on Big Al to make a risky call with just an eight high flush draw. As much gamble as Big Al has, this might be too much for even him. Really ambitious call with King Eight, just the Eight of Spades. Down he goes as Bryn Kenny continues to compile chips here. Momentum building. Dan, do you uh, get number one all time if you win? Yeah. Why like a little bit? All I know is someone said if that I you get win, the yeah. What are we at right now? About number nine. Or 20 or something, like 20 million? No, probably 25 to 28 or something. Maybe 28, 25? And BK would know better than I would. I would guess it's somewhere around 25. I think you and I are next to each other. No, I, sh I shot up this oh. year. We were what next to each other. There's a chance to separate himself from the pack. I didn't mean to throw any shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and I were like 9, 10 for, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, we like flipped. 8, 9, 9, 10. King, king. For a while. I will guess I am at 28 million, but just a guess. Yeah, 28, 29, 25. What's a couple million here and there Amongst between friends, friends right? <laughs> yeah. Bryn Kenny laying down the two fours. Well timed. Big Al now sitting on 16 big blinds with ace eight suited on the button. Gonna just flat call. Now an ace 10 for Vivek in the small. And might Rajkumar be feeling a little frustration here? Things really haven't gone his way. Yeah, you know, sometimes in a situation like this, a player might feel like he's got to make something happen, create his own luck. All in. And this is a spot where Vivek is doing just that. Moving all in for over 12 million. Well, he's going to get the bad news when Adams makes this call. All in. He's moving all in, and now Big Al can safely get away from that ace-eight suited. This is not a spot where you want to gamble if you're Big Al. Vivek was pulling off a squeeze play. Just ran into a hand this time, but he's not dead yet. There is one of his aces out, which is bad news for him. And the other bad news is to make Broadway, he'd need a king too busy. Whoa. Oh, and an Boy. ace on the flop. Rajkumar soars out in front. Just two aces left in the deck, one of them on the flop. Well, there are two kings left in the deck as well, and Adams is simply praying one of them shows up on the river here, but not to be, as we've got our first casualty of the Triton Million final table. Rajkumar ends up with a straight, and Timothy Adams ends up with a well-deserved round of applause and 1.4 million pounds. The rest of the players, they may like Timothy Adams, a great guy, but uh, typically you're happy to see him go. You're one step closer to that top prize. Plenty of respect and admiration being shared between these guys. Good to see. With the loss of Timothy Adams, everyone guaranteed at least 1.72 million and a roughly half million pound jump between seventh and sixth place money. Yeah, now you start to see the jumps matter a little more. You know, if you're on a short stack but somebody's really short, it's gonna really kind of handcuff you, not allow you to open as often as you'd like. Perhaps the term ICM would be appropriate to introduce at this point? Yeah, it would, certainly refers to independent chip modeling, a mechanism by which players assess the value of their stack in real time, in real money. 
Sort of a compass of sorts for these pros. Rajkumar's ace eight opens to 450,000 and picks up Chidwick's jack five suited, which turns into top pair on the jack high rainbow flop. Good flop for Chidwick. Makes the check on over to Vivek. Looks like he's going to continuation bet for 300,000. Chidwick certainly not folding top pair. The question now is flat, which is the standard play, or, or does he get frisky and decide to check raise here? I was also thinking about that he has 4.1 left behind, and how is he going to be able to proceed accordingly with that depth? Yeah. Well, all these players at the highest levels are always thinking about how to maximize value. And that's not a good card for Chidwick. Rajkumar has picked up a gut shot straight draw. Still well behind. Now, Vivek looks like it's, he's going to use that card to represent something like King Queen, maybe a straight, lots of hands. If he thinks that Chidwick has just a nine or a four, he may get him off it. Even a jack is possible. Yeah, with a better kicker, no doubt. 850 is the bet. Chidwick looks like he's going to make the call and leave himself with about 3 million behind. Another 1.7 sliding into this pot. Inconsequential looking six on the river. Third check out of Chidwick now. And how is Vivek going to proceed with 3.5 million in the All middle? In. Oh. All in! Vivek realizing he has no showdown value here. He's putting Chidwick on maybe a pair and a draw. Feels like the all-in bet could get him off it. Will Chidwick be able to sniff this one out? If anyone can, that's your man. This for his tournament life. If he's wrong. And he wow. makes the call. Top class stuff from Steven Chidwick sniffing out the bluff and a big double. That is world-class poker at its best. Steven Chidwick, among the best players in the world today, and you see Exhibit A as to why. A big very hit to Vivek Stack. Very, wow. Very good call. Stevie. Are the other players at the table impressed as well? And you see Vivek just sort of bowing down to these opposition. That's called getting owned really hard to get called with just the jack. Very impressive play from Steven Chidwick. Roller coaster ride for Vivek Rajkumar continues. He's on the downward trend, and perhaps Stephen Chidwick is very much on the upward side as he picks up two black aces behind a limp from Big Al with ace three suited. And from the small blind, he'll make it 700. 500 more for Big Al. He says, let's do it. Let's go. I'm fed up. I'm all in. Ace three suited. Bad news. Big Al, you're up against the worst possible hand, <laughs> that's two aces. Putting it lightly is bad news. Disaster here as Big Al effectively trapping himself, not a heart to be found on the flop. He is just hunting running threes. King and a 10 for a chop, it's just not looking. Oh, there you go. Wait a minute. We forgot about the wheel draw, a deuce now all of a sudden. He's got life. It's never easy, is it? <laughs> Paul Pua, Triton Series co-founder. With a front row seat, and somehow the case ace comes off on the river, but of course Chidwick with top set will claim the second pelt as we lose another soldier here at the final table. Well, a great showing there for Big Al, picking up 1.7 and change. Gotta be happy. And ironically, he falls to the man he invited to the Triton Million as he leaves behind just one non-pro and pro pairing Everyone guaranteed 2.2 million pounds from here on out. This invite-only affair of pros and non-pros started with 54 players, and we are now down to our final six. But there's still one pair left in the mix. Bill Perkins and Dan Smith are at that final table, and it would be pretty incredible if they ended up heads up. The odds are slim, but it is the Triton Million, so anything could happen.